The next thing we want to do is before we get further, we are going to set up the um, Tailwind because we would like to use Tailwind rather than writing our own style. So since this is a crash course, we won't be really spending time writing CSS on our own. So it's better to just use the Tailwind. So there's a blog that I have written, uh, which will be available on corytech.com slash next year's Tailwind with SaaS example. Um, next year's already has a built-in support for SaaS, but before you can actually use it, you need to install SaaS. I'm going to use yarn to install it. You can use it whatever you like. I'm going to open this in a new tab and I'll say yarn add the name of the package, which is SaaS. And then I'm also going to install all of these packages for the Tailwind and post CSS. So, so I'll say yarn add and all of these name of these packages. I'm using a dash T so that it's saved as the dev dependency because we don't really need uh, that in production. So let's hit that. So now you can see that install all of the packages. Okay, so it's install all of the packages. The next thing we're going to do is create a file called post config dot js. So let's do that. So basically we are setting up uh, Tailwind. Tailwind basically is a utility for uh, style. So let me show you that. So how you have bootstrap Similarly, we can use Tailwind, but Tailwind is better because it's a utility first CSS framework. One of the key advantages of Tailwind is that uh, it kind of gives you an ability to purge, which means that if you're going to be using only five classes, it's only going to output the CSS for those five classes, unlike Bootstrap where it's including everything. Okay, so Tailwind is one of the most recommended uh, options. So we are going with this one. You can read more about it. So I'm going to create a config file. Let's say post CSS dot config. Again, you will get all of this code on coretech.com. So you can take it from there. I'll go ahead and paste this. And then the next thing we do is we need to have the next config also. So next is yes, uh, in next years, you can go ahead and override by adding your own con configuration file. So we'll call it as next.config.js. So I've gone ahead and added a bunch of options over here. We're adding the trailing slash. Uh, you can set this to true or false, it's up to you. This basically allows the, uh, an option that whenever a user goes on to any particular URL, it's going to automatically add a trailing slash if it doesn't exist. This is good for SEO. And uh, this is the middleware, uh, which has some watch options. Again, we don't have to worry about all of this right now. We can ignore it. Uh, we have some SaaS option and it's just telling that which directory is supposed to use for that. So we're going to be using the styles directory for that. So let's close all of this. Um, in post CSS config, we just have some of the plugins that we are using called post CSS import, auto prefixer, tailwind, flexbox uh, fixes and all of these stuff. Again, you don't have to worry about it. We have already installed uh, these packages over here, as you can see, when I did yarn add and then I installed all of these packages. So those are the ones we are providing the configuration that uh, post in the post css.config that these are the plugins it's supposed to use. <coughs> Next thing it says that uh, you just need to create a configuration file for the Tailwind. So for that, you can just run this command. So if you hit this, you can see that it's already created by running this command It's created a Tailwind config.js. And currently it's using version 2.0.2 of Tailwind. And then in that configuration, you just need to pass this inside of that configuration file. You just need to pass this configuration. So now you can see it just created this. That's why it's showing this color of orange. Uh, let's replace this whole thing. We can remove this future stuff because now we have those changes available. So what's happening over here? First of all, we define what plugins we are using like Tailwind, CSS, pre-CSS, auto prefixer, all of that stuff. And it's saying that which are the directories it's supposed to look at uh, when it's supposed to 
uh, purge the CSS, which means that only output CSS for the classes that we are going to use in our component, not everything. So it's saying go to pages and any file that you create in from, that has an extension of JavaScript, use that file for purging. And then we can also create another directory called source. And then inside of this, we can put components. So this is where we're going to keep all of the components. So this path is basically saying go and check source and then components and any file that has an extension of JS. So star it means all. Okay, so any file that has ends with .js, go ahead and use that fi file for purging. So if we go ahead and use Tailwind classes in one of these files, which is inside of components or inside of the pages directory, is going to check is going to check which uh, CSS classes you have used for Tailwind, and it's going to output CSS for that. So that's that's what's happening in the Tailwind config. So let's close that. Next thing I want to do is. Um, import these uh, Tailwind base classes. So we'll create a file inside of styles and we'll name it as style.scss and we'll just put all of this import. So these are the Tailwind utilities, components and base. So we're just importing all of those uh, uh, classes. And then next thing we want to do is just make sure that this file is being included into our main file. So this is the main file. So let's import it here Let's say import. So where does it exist? Uh, it exists in so styles and then style.css. So this will make sure that whatever we have imported here is going to be available to our main application because we've imported the styles there. Okay, that's great. All right, perfect. So that's that. So let's go back and rerun our application. So yarn dev. You can also do npm run dev if you want. And then let's go back to our application. So we are running into this issue, which is post CSS plugin, post CSS nested required, post CSS 8. So it talks about this issue on the tailwind.css and it asks us to uninstall it and then install all of these packages. So let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to stop the development server and I'm going to say yarn remove and then remove these packages and then add these packages. Yarn add. So it's going to install all of these packages. Now do yarn dev. And now let's test it. Yes. So what you need to do now is since that we have got our tailwind set up, uh, what we're going to do is tailwind blocks. We'll go to tailwind blocks and it's a pretty useful uh, site. It's an open source where you can choose any of the ready-made tailwind components and layouts. So you can see that you've got these cards available. Uh, let me see if I have navigation here. Uh, I think this looks good. So how do I get the source code? So can you see you have an option of view code over here, right? So all I have to do is just copy this header. And what we're going to do is let's close all of this. So inside of the pages, you have the index.js and this is responsible for getting all of the content on your page, right? So, so this is your home page, your main page. Now, if I want to create a header, as you know, in React, it's better to break them into components. So we've already created a directory called components. So we'll create something called header. And inside of header, I'll create index.js. And then I'll create a component called header and then return and then I'll paste that piece of code that I've got it we need it, need to go ahead and uh, update this because in JavaScript we have camel casing so let's just update this line cap stroke width line join okay so that's taken care of line cap line join stroke width. So these are SVGs basically. Okay, and this should be this sh 
if there is no content inside of a opening and closing tag then it should just have have a closing tag in react same thing goes over here as well okay so this looks good so you've got header in fact let me create a layout component because we're going to be needing that component everywhere so it's better to create a layout so let's create a component called layout inside of this i'll create index.js and then a component called layout and a component needs to return something. So this is gonna return um, div and then header. I have to export it also from here. So let's just export default header. So we're exporting this component. And then, so you got the header component and then let's export default layout. And then inside of this, we'll have props. Inside of this, we'll have props and we will pull out children out of props. And then just use children over here. So if you, whatever you pass inside of this will be passed over here and replaced. So now we can use layout over here. So we can say layout and inside of this I'll paste this. So what's going to happen is that it's going to use this layout component and because in layout you have header and then whatever is inside of this layout is going to replace that with children. So this gets replaced over here. So children gets replaced by this content whatever you're passing here. So now if you go back and check onto the home page you can see that we've got nice little uh, header over here. So to take a look at the structure. So I'm going to close this off. I'm going to start with the pages. So this is your home page, home. You have layout, which means what do we have in layout? Class, you can call it like main or something. And now you can see you've got main. What does it have? It's got header. So what does header have? Header has this all of the uh, components, your links and stuff that we had uh, taken from the tail blocks and you can see you've got header, you've got all of these content we see here. Okay. Then it, there is children. So children gets passed in inside of props which means that whatever we are passing here gets passed as children. So let's say, say this is my content. You will notice that it will say this is my content. You can see now this head, com don't get confused between this head component and the header. Head is basically used for what goes in the head tag, this head tag. So you see that we're saying create next app. So if you take a look at create next app, this is the title. Oops. So this is coming from this one. Then you have the link this is the link so this is going so this anything you put over here goes in the head tag and next.js already has the next head package so you have to ensure that it's imported over here so when you install the uh, next.js application the first time it already does that for you but just to let you know if you had to do it with react you had to use the react helmet and stuff but uh, here it next.js kind of has that out of the box for you